Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube, which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Not create four machines, we'll just live with three. If required, we'll create one more, but I don't think it will be required. <clears throat> okay so we should have two ubuntu machines and one centos this could be our ansible server and this machine let's call it as host one and this machine will be host two so we have one Ansible server and we are going to manage two hosts. Okay, let's connect to all of them. This is going to be our master. And this is going to be our node one. For the for the host, I'll just keep the background white. So we know that we are working on a host, not a Ansible server. And then for the third machine, we are going to connect to this machine as well okay this will not connect yeah let me do it again let it go yeah What happened? No, 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 no. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this is a CentOS machine. So now <clears throat> we have one server. The black machine is the server. And these two machines are our hosts. Okay, so in our infrastructure, let's clear things up. There are two hosts now. Host one, host two. This one host is CentOS or Ubuntu. And one host is CentOS. Okay, now we are going to manage this. So on the server, first thing that we need to do is install Ansible. Apt update. and apt install ansible okay so it is going to install python 3 as well you can see a lot of python 3 stuff and at the end it will install ansible for us
done let's verify it and civil yep it returns it is version 296 and the python that is installed is 385 okay now one thing that we need to do is we need to connect to these remote machines via ssh we should be able to connect to this remote machines via ssh okay so if right now i say ssh and my host name it says permission denied public key so well in aws you cannot have a ssh authentication using password you need to use public private keys okay so let's set this up and let's set it up in a way that the ssh can happen passwordless now before i do that do you guys know what is ssh are you guys comfortable with ssh If you know how this works, SSH and server name, if you know what this command means, then that's enough. So do you know what this command means and how it works? Okay, let me rephrase the question. Is there anyone who does not know what this command means? Okay, you all know then, right? Okay, cool. All right, so <clears throat> what we are going to do, we are going to generate a... Hey viewers, trying to get into DevSecOps? And all for our DevSecOps certified professional programs and earn the certification that shows you are fit for these technical roles and requirements. Contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box. Book your seats for the upcoming batches now pair here I'll say SSH hyphen key gen and this command will create a private key and a public key inside my dot SSH folders okay so if in my home directory I go to dot SSH I will see a private key and a public key created now private key as the name suggests is private should be private to this machine the public key can be distributed to anyone okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this public key and give it to my ubuntu machine and to my centos machine all right so i'll say here dot ssh inside authorized keys i'm going to copy this public key copy this and paste it here that's all save same thing here vim not found yep yum install vim CentOS is a very outdated system and it's end of life also now. So that's why it's not being maintained. So we will see many out of date packages here. But we are doing this as an example so that if you have to manage Red Hat systems, well, you can do that as well. Yes, please install Vim. Done. Yeah. Open authorized keys. I and paste the SSH keys here. Great. So now my public key is available at on all these machines. Right. If I do. 
SSH to this to this host now it should say connected so now I am connected to this host right let's disconnect and now let me try to connect to this particular host and it says do you really want to connect yes and now it's connected okay now I can SSH to any of these machines from my Ansible server all right now my Ansible setup is done okay Ansible servers can talk to these machines but this is not enough there could be 100 machines that Ansible can talk to but then we need to specify to Ansible which are the machines that it should really manage which machines configuration it should really manage okay so we have something called as an a file called as an inventory right we have an inventory file and in the inventory file we have the list of hosts that Ansible should maintain or Ansible should manage all right so that file is available let me make it full screen now if we go to slash etc slash Ansible this is the installation directory of Ansible and you can see here there's a file called hosts now in this file we define what are our hosts that we want to maintain or we want Ansible to maintain or manage so I'm going to open hosts and there are a lot of examples here I will go I'll not open the examples but I can explain to you what inventory file has well inventory file simply put just has list of the machines which you want to maintain using Ansible the machines which you want to manage using Ansible so there are only two machines in our case that we want to maintain or manage so I'll just add their host names here and that's it right now these machines can be maintained by your ansible machine okay if there are let's say 100 or if let's say you have a uh, database machines let's say you have database db-01 dot example dot com then you have db-02 dot example dot com right you have many machines like this well if there are up to 100 machines or let's say 99 dot example dot com so you have 99 machines you will you wouldn't expect a modern system to ask you to write each individual host name for these 99 machines because because clearly they have a pattern right so you can instead of writing like this you can say um, zero one hey viewers our master in DevOps engineering program can help you to hone the skills necessary to succeed in high-level DevOps positions so what are you waiting for enroll now and earn certification that show you are keeping pace with today's technical roles and requirements contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now to 99 right so you can say db-01020304050 5152 all the machines dot example.com can be managed by your 
Ansible. Yeah. So this is how you can specify that. Right? You can also give them a common name. For example, uh, let me delete this one. I can say this machine is called host one. And this machine is called host two. Right? So I can say that this is host one, this is host two, and or let me call it as 192. Which one is 192? 192 CentOS, right? I'll say host underscore CentOS, right? And host underscore Ubuntu. So this machine is host underscore Ubuntu. This machine is host underscore CentOS. So call them like that. So there is a host called host CentOS, which points to this machine. There's a host called host Ubuntu, which points to this machine. Okay, and this can be done. Then now you uh, you don't you can use these names in whatever um, commands that you run for Ansible. Okay. All right, let's save this configuration, right? Now this configuration is done. Now my machine, my Ansible server knows how to, which are the hosts that it should configure or manage and how to connect to those hosts, how to reach out to those hosts. Right now, what do we do with this? So we have Ansible installed. We have host configured. What do we do with this? So now let's use it. OK, let's start configuring our servers. Now, before doing that, well, how does this actually work? How does server know that? how to create users on the host or how to install packages on the host how does how does ansible know that well ansible has something called as modules ansible has something called as modules modules are installed when you install ansible okay and modules are small external program mostly written in python mostly in python so these are external programs and these programs know how exactly to manage a system for example there is a module called apt this knows how to install an ubuntu package there's a module called yum which will know how to install CentOS package. There is a module called copy, which knows how to copy content. Right? There is a module called service, which knows how to create or manage services. So we take help of these modules to define what do we want. OK? So let's start using these modules. Now I'll say Ansible. Yeah, on host underscore Ubuntu. So this is the host which I want to run a command on. I say hyphen M pink. OK, so this I'm running an Ansible command. On host Ubuntu, 
this is this should this has to be a host which is managed in the inventory file so on host ubuntu i want to run an ansible command and ansible module and that module i'm going to execute is pink i'll say ansible host ubuntu hyphen m pink so what ansible is going to do is it's going to connect to this node via as or connect to this host via ssh and execute this module there and then show me the output of the execution hey viewers are you looking for formal training on sre practices take our sre program this course will teach you how to successfully implement site reliability engineering in the modern day 24 into 7 services kick start your sre training today contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now okay so ansible ssh to this machine based on our ssh configuration and executed this module now this module executed here and the execution was successful and it gave us this output right so this is a non-destructive module that means it does not make any change on the server it just gives you a success if your connection to this host is successful right so this module can give you uh, your information that this machine is reachable and it is up now let's say on host ubuntu i would like to um, install a package right i want to install a package on my host ubuntu i say use module apt and pass some arguments to the module so hyphen m is apt and hyphen a is for arguments for the module and what is the argument well i will say name of the package that this app module should install is finger for example right and the state of the package should be present so what i'm saying use app module manage the package called finger using the app module and ensure that the state of that package is present now i am not telling ansible on how to install this package or how to manage this package i'm saying i'm just saying use this particular module here right so what this command is going to do is this command will run this module will run on host ubuntu and it's going to install a package to ensure that the state is present of that package right let's connect to this host ubuntu which is uh this one i guess yeah this is the ubuntu machine yeah this is the ubuntu machine right so on this machine for example right now there is no application called finger there is no application called finger now using ansible and using this app module i will install finger it says no package okay and well there is no package matching finger because on aws i also have to always do apt update here right that's a problem with aws i always have to do apt update now i can also pass that as an argument here i can say update cache is equal to yes i can say app module update the cache and then ensure that finger package is present i press enter it's going to take some time and then it's going to give me some output I mean, I came in a, like, like, are there any like, like, you know, when you were making the host files, are there any changes to any crucial changes that, like, when you deploy Ansible, that you have to make into Ansible.cfg? Mm -hmm. I can show there, yeah. 
so let this finish and then I, I can I can show you that as well. Let me finish the modules part of this command and then yeah. Okay. All right, so you see an output now and it says that the execution of this module was successful and it changed something on the server. You see it's changed and the output is a bit you know yellow in color. So that means something was changed. And you can see the complete log of what change was done in the standard output part of the of the command output here. And you can see at the end, you know, setting up finger application. So finger application is installed now on our server. So if I go to this Ubuntu machine and I run finger now, finger runs. Right? So finger package is now installed. So you can use modules to perform configuration changes on your machines, right? Now, what I can do is I can run the same command on host CentOS, but this won't work because apt cannot work or apt itself will not be available on, on CentOS machine. So CentOS does not use apt. What I can do is I can say yum here. Right? I can use yum module to manage packages on my CentOS host. So on my CentOS machine, now you see yum is installed. On my CentOS machine, I can say finger and it works. I can also use the same module to say that, okay, ensure that state is absent. Ensure that state is absent for this finger package. Right, and now finger will be install, uninstalled. It says removed. And on my CentOS machine, if I now say finger, it says nah, nothing is found. Right, what happens? If on host Ubuntu, I try to install finger again. If I try to install filter finger again, so I run the same command again on Ubuntu. And it should quickly give me an output in green color. It says execution was successful, but it did not change anything. It did not change anything because it found that finger package is already installed. Right, so all these commands, these Ansible commands and configurations are idempotent. Right, they ensure idempotency. What is idempotent? Idempotency means that these commands are not going to apply any existing configurations again. If, an, if a configuration is applied already, it's not going to apply the configuration again. Okay, so item potency is an important thing to know here. Yeah, so these are uh, um, some modules which you can use. For example, also one more way uh, to use a module is Ansible. Instead of specifying individual host, I can say Ansible all. So on all my hosts, run this ping module and press enter. And then if you have 100 machines in your inventory file, on all those 100 machines, this ping module will be executed. All right. Um, there's a question from Raksha. Can we give the IP address itself if we have not named it while running the command? So here, you can either give all or you can give the machine name which you have given in the host, host file. Nothing else. You cannot give the IP address to the or, or actual IP address or host name of the machine. It should exist or it should come from the inventory file only. All right. So this is how modules work. And the way that you run these modules like this is called ad hoc commands. Right. This is a way to execute ad hoc commands. That means these commands are executed whenever there's a there's a quick need to run or to make some quick 
and dirty changes to your to your machines right these are ad hoc commands and uh, generally we don't use them we can use them for um um doing some quick and dirty changes but yeah not not in production okay so what is alternative we will talk about that now there was also a question oh, i'm sorry i did not get the name of the person who asked me this question to explain uh, about Nupam. i'm sorry anupam yes okay hey okay so anupam asked me you know uh, what could be the configurations in ansible.cfg so ansible.cfg is the system configuration file the configuration file which actually uh, defines the behavior of the ansible itself okay so here are some configuration configurations and you know some default configurations here as well which are commented out so if you want to change these configurations you can uncomment them for example which is your inventory file default is ansible host if you want to choose some other configuration file or or inventory file you can specify it here and you can change it then next question is where are your modules installed so modules are installed here right you can change them um, or you can put your own modules here and have them available in your uh, in your ansible then another example would be um, how many parallel executions you want to do so whenever you say ansible all right hyphen m ping then how many parallel command executions you want to do on 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 your host right so here it is five this is the default value you can change it here right then what is the remote port of your machines right on which ansible should ssh so many times organizations do not run ssh on the default port which is 22 for security reasons they may change it to a more unknown port like triple five or 31 or 77 something like that hmm? so you can also change what should be the default port on which the ansible server server should try to ssh on the host thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today